Okay, so what we're going to do now is a little video on counterintelligence. Before, we actually did a video on the U.S. debt and when we actually thought it would collapse. So right now we're going to do the definition of basically counterintelligence. We're going to go through the entire series of the counter down from CI Center all the way through. So there's about at least 100 different, 100 different types of counter. So not many people actually know uh, what counter actually is. So we decided to actually just briefly go through it now. What is counterintelligence? Basically is you trying to stop someone else from getting information about your financial systems, your intelligence systems, or anything like that. Now there are a lot of agencies that are actually involved in counterintelligence. You have the Central Intelligence Agency, which is the CIA. You have NSA, not really the president, but he gets briefed on most of this stuff. You have secret service that's in that, you have Homeland Security, Department of Defense, uh, FBI, and not really, they might be in that, uh, DEA. They would basically be on the lines of also ATF, Drug Enforcement Agency, and they may actually, they may work along with the ATF, but <clears throat> that's going to be the thing, and also obviously the counterintelligence kind of center. Now, Decided to actually put up a little diagram here, uh, which I actually had before you guys came in. So this is just an example. We're not going to pick on anyone right now. But let's say we just made up a little country right now. This country is you. You don't have to live in America, but it's just an example. So this is America, right here. And let's say you're in this country, and this is your department right here. That's your little department. Alright, not that big. Let's say the president lives there. Let's say the military operations come out of that. And this is a country that's actually trying to get your information. So your information is here. They want to bring it back over here and find ways to actually put moles or basically blackmail people inside the department. So we're going to leave, we're going to put a little capital or so right here. much. Okay, so we're going to, this is just an example of how another country would actually try to get into where you are now. Now, if you're in business, you could also use this from other companies actually trying to take your information and things like this are actually going to happen in the business world all the time. Other countries right now, they're actually trying to hack into other countries. China is actually using asymmetric warfare to try to get into the systems that the U.S. are working on now, including the Department of Defense. They're trying to basically attack not just the CIA, but also the financial systems and the businesses which are actually involved with American commerce. So let's do this. Now that you have America, let's call this, we don't want to pick on a country like that so I don't go in a country and I get kidnapped or something like that. But you could pick Russia, you could pick China, you could pick Israel, you could pick India, you could pick anyone. So let's call this, let's call this country Rudney, for example. We'll just pick a name. We're not going to use any country because we don't want them to, you know, our taxes. So let's just call it Rudney. Rudney. All right. Yeah, it's just a country. Um, all of them are first world countries. They have computers. They have technology. And they know what they're doing. Now, let's say that our country right now, which are in America, we actually do deals with Rodney. So what do we do? Our businesses that we have in this country are also going to operate in this country, and their business is just the same. The U.S. has business in Russia. The U.S. has business in China. Also, on top of that, China has business in the U.S. You constantly hear people talking about, oh, we're buying too much from China. The U.S. debt is actually increasing. Well, even though that is true, which it is, if you actually look at the dollar stores in the country, most of the products come from China. It's true. Is it a problem? It depends how you look at it. If the products that are actually made in another country come over here, we have to pay a certain price. And if they're over here now, we're going to end up paying a bit more and actually charging for the people working here. So this is Rodney, this is America. Now, what happens if Rodney wants to get into our system? 
So everyone has computers, everyone has technology. They want to get into our systems. We have to imply counterintelligence. Now, here is where it gets a bit tricky. You have, what well, everyone has computer technology. So we'll just put, let's just put uh, computer tech. Okay, that's an asset. That's something that you have that you can use as an attack and as a defense. So, now that you have computer tech here, not the kind of tech, let's put computer tech, computer tech here, you need to find a way to actually stop the people from getting your information. What can you do? There's a long list of things you can do. Even from sending people into their country to turning their people. Now, it's actually called when you turn an agent. When you turn an agent, you basically end up, you can blackmail that person, you can pay that person, that person can be someone who's been in that company for 15 years and hasn't had a raise. And you can come along all of a sudden, give them $15,000, and they can just destroy that country. That person could even be custodian, for example. Let's say there was a custodian in Langley. I'm not picking on them. I'm just saying, actually, yes, I am picking on them. Let's say the custodian in Langley. And he had the opportunity to pick up these stack of papers that didn't belong to him. And instead of shredding them or throwing them out, he kept them. He didn't realize, wait a minute, I could sell this to Rodney. But what would he do? If he never got a raise, if this guy was working on the job and it happened, what's he going to do? He can go ahead and sell it to Rodney. Now what's going to end up happening? Let's say he contacted uh, one of their embassies or something like that. He's like, hey, you know what, I'm a friend and my friend works at such and such place and knows a friend here. The guy said, okay, uh, we'll meet. I'll send one of my agents to meet you. Now, if Rodney is here, and he's in the U.S., how is Rodney going to set an agent here? Well, it's very simple. We call them sleepers. A sleeper is basically someone who is working for this country or company, country, for example, and they're here. Basically, they're waiting to get a job. So they could be living in hotels, they could be living in cars, they could be living anywhere. And that once that person gets activated or that person is reassigned to a job, they go there. So what happens is the custodian, let's call him, let's call him Bob. Even if you're Bob and you're a spy, don't take this the wrong way. Let's say Bob, who worked here, got the stack of papers and he met the agent, and it's a, he met the agent here. And he traded the information. The person basically uh, calls back to headquarters at Rudney and says, hey, I got this amazing information. It's worth a lot to us. How can I get it to you guys? And the person says, okay, that information is good. Let's pay the guy. He pays the guy $5,000 and says, hey, if you can do it again, if your friend can do it again, have him do it. We'll pay him a little bit more. So what's he do? He goes back. He goes back to his job, <clears throat> gets more and more information. Now what happens when you have a person who's constantly pulling out information? So Bob works here. Bob is constantly pulling out more information from them. So what do you right now have? Right now you have a leak. A leak is someone who is pulling out information from one place and giving it to another party. And that is not their job. He's a custodian. All right? His job is to clean up the dirt, sweep them off the floors, yet a lot of people don't understand. Custodians have access to the rooms. They have access to so much information. Is that a good thing? In a way, when they're supposed to be cleaning. But not when it comes to company or country security. Remember, a custodian can go into any room, can even go into the private rooms and the locked rooms. They have a key for the whole building. Some of them can actually even get in your cars and pull out papers. You were in the parking lot, you forgot your keys, they're locked in there. The custodians, they actually have these tools and some wire hangers, they can bend a wire hanger, put it through the window and actually unlock a car. So the real question is, should you only trust your employees or the custodians? And you have to be careful about who you pay. That's one of the problems we actually have. So, <clears throat> let's get back to it. Bob works here, now they have a leak. Bob is a leak. But they don't know it yet because he's a custodian. Bob takes that information, constantly passes it to Rodney, or Rodney's agent. One of Rodney's agents mails it and brings it back there. 
Now, is it a good thing? It's a good thing for Rudney. They got more information on these people right here. Now, how do you stop Bob? Okay, let's let's make his name Bob. All right, let's give this agent over here. Uh, let's give it a name. Hmm. Let's call her. Let's call her Sally. Let's make it a girl. Easy to use girls in the intelligence field, so let's call her Sally. Okay, Sally. So Sally meets Bob. Bob pulls the information out. Sally gives it over there. Now. Here's what happens. Many things can actually happen at this time. Uh, you borrow your pen. You borrow your uh, pen right there. Okay, so. So what happens? They pull information out and you have the whole thing. So, you want to be able to stop this counterintelligence. Basically, you need to find out if you have a leak. Lie detection annual tests, drug tests, everything you actually can. If they have a leak, they're going to try to find a way to stop that leak. What do you do? You find out the leak. All the employees there, who does what, and just find it. So that's basically counterintelligence, stopping someone from getting information. Now, Bob has access to the information, but how does this agency stop Rudney from getting the information? You stop Bob. Very simple. You have to be able to trust your employees and test them. Let's say Bob slips up and they find it. Now they want to stop Rudney from getting information. How do these guys right here stop Rudney from getting information? They have to stop Bob. And when you stop Bob, you stop the leak. Very simple. All right? So you stop Bob, you stop the leak. And that's what basically counterintelligence is, stopping it. Once you find Bob, you're good to go. How do you find Bob? Bob is going to slip up one day. Remember, Bob is getting a bit old. He's tired on the job, but he's going to make this his second job. And he's going to start slacking off and doing a couple of things suspicious. Okay? Now that Bob does this, he may slip up once or twice. He might let it go, but when it comes to the field, he could be giving out continuity of government projects or the national framework for the NSA, which you don't want them doing. So counterintelligence, stopping these people from getting your information. Stop Bob, you stop the leaks. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to stop us here.